Hi kiddos, welcome back for another lesson. So in this lesson, I will talk to you about the periodic table, its structure, uh, what kind of information you can extract out of it. You'll see there's a, a lot of info you can get out of it. Okay, let's begin. So, the periodic table, it's a way to classify elements according to certain patterns that we have observed. So the word periodic means that things keep repeating. And because we uh, see that elements have similar properties, some elements we can group together that have similar properties, well, the periodic table was structured in such a way to organize the elements based on their properties and their internal structure and whatnot. So one way we can look at the periodic table is to divide it in three sections. So you can see here there's a section that's in yellow, one that is in green, and one that is in blue. And you will notice there's a staircase over here that basically divides the left from the right side. Over here, the bottom part, this is a little section that would fit over here. So you see a little white space here. Technically, these should fit in here. But if we were to put them there, the periodic table would be too wide. So they were taken out and put underneath. We were not going to pay attention to them. We're just going to look at the basic structure of the periodic table. So just uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stick to simple elements. Okay, so on the left hand side, the yellow section, those are the metals. So all of these are all metals. They all have properties of metals. On the right hand side in blue, you have the non-metals and in the center here, well in between I should say, you have green elements. Those are the, the metalloids or semi-metals. Now you will notice that hydrogen over here is in blue, but it is positioned at the top of the first column. It's put there because of its internal structure. It does belong technically to this group over here because of its internal structure, but it's really not a metal, it's a non-metal. That's why it's in blue, just like these over here. So hydrogen is a special case. I'll talk about it later. So metals on the left, non-metals on the right, metalloids or semi-metals in between, and hydrogen is a non-metal, but it's located over here because of its internal structure. And again, I will explain that a little later, why it's positioned there. So that's one way of looking at it. Now, if we look at properties of metals versus non-metals and why they are grouped that way, we have a vague idea as to what a metal is, right? We know that they can conduct electricity, uh, sometimes they can conduct heat, if you think of uh, pots and pans that you use in the kitchen. Uh, they can be ductile, if you think of copper, it can be stretched to make wires. It can, they can be malleable, in other words, they can be bent without breaking. They're normally shiny, that's the first thing that comes to mind when we talk about metals. They are all solid at room temperature except for one, mercury, which is liquid. Many of them react with acids and in the process release hydrogen, so they fizz if they're in contact with acid. Nonmetals, on the other hand, they're basically the opposite. They are poor conductors of electricity and heat, often they don't conduct at all. They are brittle, so they break easily. Uh, they are dull, they're not shiny. Most of them, many of them are gases at room temperature and they do not react with acids. Now metals can be mixed together physically to form alloy, alloys, sorry. And those alloys will have the properties of all the metals that are mixed together. So it makes them like super metals. So that's for the metals versus the non-metals. They are opposite of each other. Now, what about the semi-metals? So the semi-metals are metalloids. They have properties of both metals and non-metals. So as an example, silicon, it's used in semiconductors. So we're going to find that very often in circuit boards, such as this one, the image on the top left. Um, so any piece of electronic that you can think of, a cell phone, uh, a microwave, a TV, uh, will have some kind of circuit board inside and will have silicon in there. Uh, other types of metalloids, uh, glass can be mixed with metalloids to make super glass. So as an example, we're going to mix boron with regular glass, we're going to make boron glass, and we're going to use that in spacecraft, so it's very, very resistant. Pyrex you're probably familiar with, we use this in the kitchen, so it's very resistant to temperature changes. It can go from very cold to very warm, and it won't crack. 
boron silicate glass is used in the lab to make all the glassware that we use, so the test tubes, the beakers, and, and that type of uh, material. Antimony is a flame-resistant compound, so antimony trioxide will be used in car seats, for example, clothing and other flame-retardant products. So if you're watching a movie and somebody's on fire, well, the actor or the stunt person that, that did the stunt uh, would be wearing some kind of special suit that protects him or her from the flames. So that probably contains antimony, which, again, is a flame-retardant. Okay, so that's one way of classifying things. Now let's see what else we can say about the periodic table.